Argyle and Butte, a wonderland of waterscapes and tranquil islands. With more than 2,000 miles of coastline, lovers of space, calm and solitude are as at home here as the most adventurous thrill seekers. It's here by Loch Lomond where the Scottish Highlands and Lowlands come together. A chance meeting caused by a fault line in the Earth's crust created what I think is one of the most iconic landscapes in the whole of the UK. Located on the west coast of Scotland, Argyll and Butte has 23 inhabited islands. Each offer a unique culture and epic scenery that's guaranteed to take your breath away. Well, living in Argyll and Butte is beautiful because there's always so much to do. Uh, the people are really friendly. Even if it's raining, it's always a good day. The gateway to Argyll is the distinguished town of Helensburgh, which sits on the River Clyde and is just a hop, skip and a jump from Glasgow. It's great to live in this part of Scotland because in one way you feel kind of isolated, like I feel kind of at one with nature, but at the same time I can be in the city in like under an hour. And in the north of the region, the Victorian seaside resort of Oban is renowned as Scotland's seafood capital. Whether you come here to island hop, walk in the wilderness, or seek out adventure, locals and tourists alike agree this is one bonny place. Scotland is one of those places you just can't help falling in love with. And once you've fallen, it's very difficult to get back up. That's certainly true for one half of today's couple. The other half has taken a little bit more persuading, but now she's firmly on board. When I first went to Scotland in about 1970, I just fell in love with the place. I think it's the most admirable country. I love the people, I love the psychology of the people up there. And, you know, it is beautifully wild. There's the nature there is astounding. It's really a gem that we're longing to explore. Meet Lizzie, a retired primary school teacher, and her husband, Matt, a retired wine merchant. So this is our house. It's a really lovely house, but it would be nice, instead of having a busy road in front of our house, to have uh, some lovely scenery. Now they've stepped back from work to focus on a brand new chapter of life in a brand new country. Coming to Scotland means that we can start a new adventure in our life. We no longer are tied to, to jobs and family so much so that we can explore Scotland far more than, than we have in the past. And I'd quite like to get a boat and learn how to fish. <laughs> it won't be all play, however. I would like um, some opportunities to work, whether it's in a local shop or local business. Um, I do quite a lot of craft work that I would be quite interesting seeing if there was a market for. Um, but also, you know, if, depending on what the house offered, it might offer opportunities for, for letting out during some of the year. I think we're looking forward to a more peaceful existence, less congestion, um, fresh air. Um, looking at nature. People further. with more time. Yes. Lizzie and Matt have a budget of £600,000 with which to start their new life in Scotland. They want a detached property with at least three bedrooms plus space for Lizzie's craft room. A kitchen, diner and a conservatory are also high on their wish list. But most important of all is a property with views of the spectacular coastlines that Argyll and Butte are renowned for. This is such a beautiful part of the world, and for Matt and Lizzie, this isn't just about a house, but this is their chance to live their best life. New hobbies, touring, and the chance to start again. The children have left home, they can do whatever they want. This is about their future and the adventures that go with it. Well, Lizzie and Matt, welcome to Argyll and Butte. I think we've picked the best day to start our house hunt. Your young retirees 
but there's no stopping coming up here for you two, is it? Oh, definitely. We want to explore this land um, fully. Uh, we've not really explored the north of Scotland, so we'd love to do that. So hopefully this is going to be your base. I also think it's our Ithaca. After our life's journey, this is our journey's end. And that's why the sea is really important for me, because it Ithaca. feels like Ithaca. I love that. Should we make a start? Let's do it. Come on. Our tour of West Scotland begins on the Cowell Peninsula in Argyll, in the coastal village of Strachur. On the shores of Loch Fyne, Scotland's longest sea lock, this tight-knit village has a small hotel and restaurant and a tea room, which also doubles as the local store and post office. A five-minute walk from the village centre, we find this property in an elevated position with breathtaking views of the lock and the mountains and glens beyond. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. So through the gate, and welcome to potentially your new home. Wow. Oh, it's fabulous. That's fantastic. That fantastic. roof, the little archway. <gasps> it's that little gorgeous. Oh. Yep, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, job done, right, that's it. This does look incredible. I mean, just standing here, the birds are all out just for the two of you. <laughs> and then you just look over your shoulder behind you and then you've got all of that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, we asked for a view, and that is a magnificent one. That's really important, is. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm struggling wow. to control my emotions. Oh. Are you? <laughs> I think it's just so lovely. I am so excited to show you around this property. Mm. Yeah. Shall we step inside? Let's Come roll. On, <laughs> well, that's a strong first reaction, and I totally understand it. This is an awe-inspiring location. So much to take in, isn't there? This handsome double-fronted Victorian property dates back to around 1880. Now, I'm hoping this house is going to evoke the same sort of reaction as outside. What a lovely size. Wow. What a lovely shape. Super room. It's absolutely what I'd hoped for. Yeah. Um, because it's cosy and snug. Mm. And what about that view out the window? Unbelievable. And these character features are Just love it. beautiful. Love it. Brilliant. First impressions. Oh, this could be a hole in one. It, you know, this is our first house, and for us to love it so much is Amazing. incredible, really. I just love it when a property evokes such a fervent response, and we're barely through the front door. Now, I don't want to jinx it, but I think they're going to love the next room too. A cosy little snug with a wood-burning stove that lies right in the centre of the house and leads through to the kitchen. Wow. Lovely little kitchen. Look at that view from the sink. You'd Where always want it? to be doing the washing. <laughs> you would always. <laughs> you would be volunteering, wouldn't yes. we? I'll wash up. <laughs> I'll wash up. I mean, with views like that, they change every 15 minutes. Yeah. Let alone the different seasons. Yeah. No. But this is such a snug little area as well, Have isn't it? Have a nice it? little table here, yes. kitchen table here. Yeah. yeah, you'd be doing your crosswords. Yeah, yeah. I love the decor in here. Yeah. You're quite taken with it, aren't you? Yeah, mm, totally. I'm sending Lizzie and Matt to explore the rest of downstairs on their own. Off to the side of the snug, there's a conservatory that's used as a dining room, and at the rear of the house... It's another kitchen. That's really useful to have this. You could have stuff going on here at Christmas yeah. time. Or if we've got family to stay, they can use it as their kitchen. Oh, wow. Look at those windows all the way along. This is your craft room sorted out. Definitely. What a super room. It keeps on going, this house, doesn't it? It's always a surprise around the corner. This is a really nice little bedroom, very convenient. This one, the first of four bedrooms, has an ensuite. The other three bedrooms are upstairs. A double that overlooks the back garden, another double with an ensuite, a family bathroom, and the main bedroom. So there's a theme with our property. Every room seems to have a view. <laughs> <laughs> and this being the main bedroom has that incredible vista as well. 
It's gorgeous. To wake up to that. Absolutely gorgeous. So you've got an ensuite. <gasps> oh, wow. That's amazing. I think this is everything we asked for and more. And good storage, lovely Absolutely character features. Amazing. It's unbelievable, it really is. I sense they'll feel the same about the outside space. The house plot totals half an acre with a formal lawn at the front and a large mature garden at the back. There are fruit trees, a veggie patch and a polytunnel, as well as several sheds and outbuildings. I wonder if I've left the best bit till last. Look at that view. Oh. Amazing. Who's the gardener or are you both keen gardeners? I'm the gardener. What do you make of the front? I will spend virtually all day out here. Really? Mm. So, we've got to put a price on this house. Mm. What's it on the market for, do we think? I can't believe it's not going to be at the very top. So I'm thinking that it's got to be offers over 600,000. OK. I'm thinking a little bit less. I'm going to say offers over 535. OK. The asking price is offers over, are you ready? £399,000. <gasps> You're kidding. You're joking. That's unbelievable. Where's my checkbook? <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm almost speechless. This detached Victorian property has four bedrooms, a formal reception room, a conservatory and a light-filled garden room. Perched on the hillside overlooking Loch Fine, the views are spectacular. On a plot of half an acre in the middle of a small, friendly village, it's on the market for offers over £399,000. We've both fallen in love with this house. Lizzie has fallen in love with this house massively. Um, I think it could, could be our perfect house. I can't believe that this is the first house we've seen and I feel that we found our forever home. I, I, can't, I can't put into words how marvellous it is. I don't really want to drag you away because it went so incredibly well. Happy to leave? Well, I think we'd like to stay if we possibly could. I don't know how you're going to better this house. Let's see how we get on. Follow me. We're taking the scenic route for our next destination and travelling around Loch Fine to its western shore and the town of Inverary. Lizzie and Matt have visited Scotland on many occasions, but experiencing life as a local is something quite different. So to help them really get under the skin of the place, we send them to explore this beautiful Georgian town. Overlooking the still waters of Loch Fine, Inverary is home to some 500 plus residents. Inverary is beautiful to live in. It's calm, peaceful, people are friendly, everybody says hello. It's a bit like going back to the 1970s, but with Wi-Fi. There are no motorways or train stations here, but the town is served by the A83. Head south for a spectacular coastal road trip down the peninsula of Kintyre to Campbelltown. Drive southeast for around 60 miles and you'll be in the centre of Glasgow. There are also daily bus services to the city, with more frequent services in the summer months. OK, so how long would it take to get to Glasgow from here? Well, it would be about an hour and a half, hour and three quarters around there. The town is renowned for its spectacular 19th century Scottish baronial castle, a Gothic revival masterpiece, complete with fairy tale turrets. The ancestral home of the Duke of Argyll, chief of the Clan Campbell, it's still lived in by the present-day Duke and his family. You can go on a lot of walks around the castle grounds. You can go up to Donny Quay at the top of the hill there. You can even uh, sit in and have a pint at the George Hotel. This 180-year-old hotel, like all of the buildings on the town's main street, is distinctive for its monochrome Georgian architecture. 
The town, as a conservation area, has to be kept all black and white. You'll notice every sign in the town, all the window frames, everything's black and white, so it's in keeping. We don't even have any large company brand names on any buildings. That's not allowed. The harbour offers the perfect opportunity for a nature-loving couple to get better acquainted with the local wildlife. What's that, Bav? That's an interesting one. You see? Is it a nice it's structure? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's having a good old peck about. Having a jolly good lunch. Yeah. And on that note, it's time for us to refuel too. We're leaving Argyll and Butte now and hopping over the border to the village of Bishopton, half an hour west of Glasgow. The village's residents can use the amenities in Houston, a 15-minute drive south where there's a couple of pubs, a village shop, a post office, a church and several schools, including a state secondary that regularly features in the top 10 Scottish league tables. On the country road that links Houston and Bishopston sits the former Kin Estate and, in the former stables and motor shed, our next property. Wow. <laughs> There's an entrance. Blimey. When did the Adams family move out? <laughs> <laughs> the monkeys? Are they monkeys on the roof? They are monkeys on the roof. Known locally as the Monkey House, the former Kin Estate has been the object of curiosity with locals for years. Designed by the acclaimed architect Sir Robert Lorimer, the reason for the frolicking monkeys isn't clear, but the original owner appears to have been a rather whimsical fellow. There's a huge sort of manor house just behind these properties, and it was owned by a gentleman called Johnny Holmes in the 1900s, and these were the support buildings around, and he built it to house his art collection and to entertain his friends. Wow. First impressions? Wow, then a bit more wow. Very curious. <laughs> I think it looks fabulous. It's mad and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what you make of the inside. Right, OK. The manor house and surrounding estate buildings were developed into 17 separate dwellings by the revered country house developer Kit Martin in the 1980s. Lovely stone walls. Wow. In Scotland, buildings of special historic or architectural interest are put into one of three listing categories, A, B or C, and this particular property is B listed. We're starting this viewing in the kitchen. So all the properties have been converted and this used to be the grain store. Beautiful. Lovely range. And it's a, it's a good size. Yeah, perfect. And shape. Perfect. I suppose if I had one wish, it would be that the window was bigger, but obviously it's, uh, it's, not, it's not going to happen. No. no. But I think it's a pretty good kitchen. I mean, it looks like ready to move in, you know? Oh, definitely. It's yeah. really nice. The flooring is wonderful. Yeah. Well, we're off to a solid start, but the star attraction of this unique property is the main living area next door. Oh, wow. Gosh. What an amazing room. Wow, isn't it just? This is incredible. The height of the ceiling, the light that's just pouring in. The beautiful window over there. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to believe this wasn't designed to be an incredible drawing room. No, absolutely. From the outside, it looked like a garage. <laughs> and you know what? You are so right, because this is where the gentleman would keep his cars. And then, believe it or not, that incredible conservatory that has been replaced from the original one, but built to the same spec as where the cars were washed. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like you've won two weeks in a luxury Malibu apartment. And, you know, I keep expecting, you know, to have to go back to my ordinary house. Yeah. You're working as hard, making us really think about what we want. That's what I'm here for, Lizzie. The stairs in the main reception room lead up to a self-contained double bedroom with an ensuite bathroom. The remaining bedrooms are on the ground floor. There's another double bedroom also with an ensuite bathroom and a third and final double bedroom at the end of the property. Lovely room. Beautiful view through that window there. It's nice to have the two aspects, isn't it? But that window in particular. It's, it's such a peaceful room. You'd get a very sound night's sleep here. Yeah. 
I can see Matt and Lizzie wandering around, and I think, would it be fair to say they're a little bit in awe of this property? I think this is the type of property that they'd love to come and visit, you know, if their friends owned it. But whether it's going to be their next home, I'm not so sure. Also on the ground floor is this snug area with stairs that lead to a TV room. From here, you get a wonderful view of the wraparound walled garden. In addition, there's a further 170 acres to explore and enjoy here. Upkeep of the grounds is split amongst all of the estate residents, with this property's share of the maintenance equaling about £160 per month. It is certainly a unique property. You're never going to see anything like this again. So we're going to try and put a price on this home. I reckon they would probably put it on at 550 OK. I'd go slightly higher. I'd say offers over 580. The asking price is offers over 595,000 yeah. pounds. Yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. This unique conversion has an exceptional double height reception room with a very generous light-filled sunroom. It also has a good-sized kitchen diner, three bedrooms and a private walled garden part of a 170-acre estate within a half-hour drive of Glasgow, it's on the market for offers over £595,000. We've loved looking round this house. It's a fabulous house to look at. It's the sort of thing you'd see in a property magazine, but we don't feel it's quite right for us. This property may not be for Matt and Lizzie, but what a treat to have been able to look around it. As our day draws to a close, we're stopping off in the village of Tarbert on the western shores of Loch Lomond. When Lizzie and Matt move to the region, they want to rekindle old interests and pursue new ones. So to find out more about what this part of the world can offer, we're meeting Stuart Cordner. His company has run pleasure cruises, water buses and ferry services on the loch for the past four decades. So Stuart, great to meet you and thank you for inviting us on your cruiser. Now you are a local boy, aren't you? Born and bred here in Tarbert. Yep, that's right, Nicky. Been here all my days. Uh, I'm a lucky boy. It's uh, a great place to live and a great place to work. I fancy getting the boat and learning to fish. Would this be good water to do that on? Yep, absolutely. We've got a uh, pike, salmon, uh, brown trout, sea trout. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the fishing's very popular in the loch. The, uh, most successful fisherman at the moment is possibly the osprey. <laughs> right. At the moment, we're seeing the osprey daily coming down and taking fish out of the water, which really is you know, a great, great sight. What other sorts of birds do you see? Yep, uh, golden eagles just in the hill behind me, uh, buzzards, obviously a lot of cormorants, oyster catchers, uh, an abundance of wildlife. We have uh, deer on the hills, and uh, yeah, we even have a colony of wallabies on one of the uh, on one really? of the islands. Yeah. Lovely. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Cheers, Nick. If the splendour of Argyll and Butte has got you dreaming of a new life on the shores of a Scottish loch, then here's everything you need to know about the property market. The average cost of a detached house in Scotland is just over £293,000, but here in Argyll and Butte, it's almost £40,000 less, at just shy of £254,000. Turns out you can put a price on these spectacular surroundings and it's not quite as much as you might have thought. But buyers beware. Our overwhelming urge to seek peace and tranquility has now opened up the most remote parts of this region, and the competition is fierce. The property market at the moment in Argyll and Butte is very buoyant. It's probably the busiest market that we've seen in the last six years. We just took a property on Loch Oil Head. Uh, Loch Oil Head is very rural. Four years ago, we would have really struggled. In fact, two years ago, we would have struggled to sell that. Uh, however, it went on the market a week and a half ago, and we've had, I think, 40 viewers out at that property. I've set a closing date for Tuesday next week, and I think 
we will probably have about 12 or 13 people closing on that property. With the closing date situation, obviously you're looking at a number of purchasers bidding for the same property and we're achieving at least 20% over home report value, which is phenomenal. The market at the moment is so competitive that everybody is looking for cash buyers. We have so many cash buyers or ready buyers at the moment, it's terrifying. I, get, I put a property on the market today and as I left the office here we've probably got about 35 years going out to that and the majority are ready to purchase. They've either sold already or they're cash. Just like our buyers today, Lizzie and Matt have sold their family home on the outskirts of Epsom in Surrey and have put aside a budget of £600,000 with which to start their new life in Argyll and Butte. But either side of this budget, there's some fantastic property to be had. We just can't promise it will be around for long. Offers over £149,000 could secure you this two-bedroom timber lodge with views over Loch Goyle in the Loch Lomond and Trossachs National Park. At the other end of the scale is this substantial detached property in the village of Kilmacolm in Inverclyde. It boasts three reception rooms and five bedrooms and is on the market for offers over £770,000. Or perhaps you fancy a short break with friends and family. Then check out Cat's Castle near the village of Cardross. With two acres of grounds, it sleeps up to 12 guests in five bedrooms and is the perfect base for exploring Glasgow, Helensborough and Loch Lomond and the Trossachs. Prices start from £350 per night with a minimum three-night stay. It's so lovely exploring Argyll and Butte with Lizzie and Matt, and I feel like they're truly ready to start the next chapter right here. Not only have we already found them a house that they love, and my gosh, were they inspired by that property, but they're in constant awe of the beauty on offer here, as am I. And the good news, we've got plenty more of that to come today. It's mystery house time and we're heading to Clinda on the Rosneath Peninsula situated on the waterfront of Gare Loch. The village of Rosneath, a popular tourist destination, is a 15 minute walk away and has shops, a church and a community garden, a primary school and a library. But the real draw is the loch in which seals and pods of porpoise are often seen. And just along the coastal road, metres from the shore of Gare Loch, is this Victorian villa. So if you were driving along this coastal road, would you fancy staying in a property like this? Well, if it said vacancies, probably yes. <laughs> well, this is why it is a mystery house. Because if you wanted to run a business as well, a small business, then this would be very enticing as a B&B, &B, perhaps. Mm. Well... It's fascinating. <laughs> it's enormous. So on that note, shall we step inside? Let's yes, please. Follow me. Lizzie and Matt have considered the possibility of renting out spare rooms to generate an extra income. This house takes that idea and supersizes it. How is this for an entrance? Oh, wow. Lovely. It's not currently run as a B&B, but with a bit of work, it most certainly could be. So let's start off in the living room, or perhaps I should call this the drawing room. Could be a parlour. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's a cosy living room. Oh, nice. It does feel really, really comfortable, doesn't it? You think, oh, I could just flop here. That's yes. Nice. I'm already thinking where my place would be and where yours would be. Yeah. Actually, the floor plan of this room isn't daunting. It's not dauntingly big. No, I'm surprised. I thought it would be uh, too big, but actually it doesn't feel too big. This house, however, is a sprawling 4,000 square feet. Here on the ground floor, there's a dining room, another smaller sitting room, a downstairs bathroom, and a self-contained annex that consists of a family room, kitchenette, and shower room. The main kitchen is right at the back of the house. 
So you probably realised this house was going to have a very good sized kitchen. It's beautiful. But it feels really homely again, doesn't it? It does. It's got a lovely range, that table's a lovely size. I mean, I suppose I might be a little bit worried about the upkeep, but if we were, you know, renting some of it out for part of the year, that would help pay True. for that. True. I'd quite like to keep myself busy, and this might be the perfect opportunity. It may well be. I'm sending them off to explore the rest of the house on their own. Oh, lovely proportioned room. Yes, it's very stately, isn't it? Yeah, it's a sort of mirror image of the sitting room. I do like the wallpaper. In the 1900s extension is what was once, and could be again, the billiards room. Gosh, gosh, double gosh. This could be a fabulous room but it does need a lot of work. And I would imagine quite costly work as well. There's work to do upstairs too. There are eight bedrooms in total up here, many with lovely Victorian fireplaces. They're served by just one shower room, but with a bit of a rejig, the smaller rooms could be turned into en suites to the larger bedrooms to better suit paying guests. This is the main bedroom. Yep, lovely, lovely size. windows. Very nice fireplace again. It's great views, aren't they? From Beautiful. up here. Fabulous. Very comfortable bedroom. Another very comfortable bedroom. Lovely. They're great sizes, aren't they, really these are. rooms? I do love those windows. Yeah. Very pretty. Outside, there's a generous lawn area at the front of the property a large driveway with a double garage at the top, and then a huge expanse of lawn heading up the hillside. And there we have it. Our tour of the mystery house is done. All that's left to do now is to put a price on it. Well, I'm going to go quite low on this one relative to its huge size, because I think the price has got to be affected by the amount of work that needs doing. Um, so I'm going to say offers over 475. OK, right. and I'm going to go slightly higher, so I'm going to say offers over £510,000. OK. Well, Matt, you are the closest, because the asking price is for offers over £473,000. I wonder whether we'd have enough money left in our coffers to, A, do the work that we think it needs, and B, to give us that little cushion that we need for the next few years uh, to see us through until our pensionable age. So a bit of a question mark for you guys. Mm. OK, well, that is fair enough. This handsome detached Victorian villa has eight bedrooms, four reception rooms, a billiards room and a large kitchen diner. Overlooking the stunning Gare Lock, it would need a fair bit of money spent on it to turn it into a viable B&B business, but being that it's on the market for offers over £473,000, there should be money left in the budget to do that. Wow, this is quite big. When I say quite big, I mean very big. And when I say very big, I mean scary big. <laughs> this is a magnificent property but actually we would have to spend a fair bit of money just to get it up to the standard that, that we would want it at, and then we would have to maintain that standard. I think it's just a little bit beyond our reach. Our search is for a life of increased simplicity, not increased complexity, and I think that this house would give us increased complexity and quite a lot of it. Here they come, down the grand steps. Are we ready to go? Yes, yep. indeed. Loch Lomond, one of the most popular tourist destinations in Scotland, it's home to over 30 small islands, and today I'm taking a trip to one of them. Welcome aboard. Thank you very first. much. So looking forward to this. The island I'm heading for is the largest and most southerly island in Loch Lomond. How glorious is this? I am catching the ferry to that island over there, Inchmurin. 
owned by the same family for over 70 years. And this is their daily commute. Inchmarin is owned and managed by three generations of the Scott family, with Skipper Tom, one of the family members who lives and works on the island. Wow, what an incredible view and spot. I think you must have the best job in the world being Skipper. I think so, yeah. It's, it's got to be up there anyway. I'm very lucky to have grown up here, certainly. So, so what's it like living on your own island? Uh, I, it's magic, actually. Is so, it? Um, work can be hard from time to time, but that's part of the parcel, really. Um, it's worth it at the end of the day when you get to go out and enjoy the loch and the countryside and everything. So. Yeah. It's magnificent. I can't wait to explore. I'm meeting Tom's aunt Morag at one of the island's many beautiful viewpoints. So let's talk about island life then. What actually happens on this island? Business-wise, there's a pub, restaurant, self-catering accommodation. We have a farm, um, we have boat storage, boat mooring. So there's lots of different aspects of work going on. So this is a family concern. Yes. How many members actually live and work on the island? Uh, there are 10 of us in, in the Scott family here and uh, three generations we're all mucking in at various jobs here. I mean, do people leave from the family? Do they decide, you know what, I'm, I love the island, but it's not for me, I want to go and do something else, or do most of them gravitate back? They mostly come back. At the moment, they, some of them are students, and some of them have gone off maybe to Australia, for example, but decided to come home and live, which is lovely for us, that they've seen a bit of life elsewhere, and they're still, still choosing to come home, knowing that they'll have a job to do when they come here, they'll just have to <laughs> roll up their sleeves. It's not going to be a holiday. <laughs> I appreciate it's a lot of hard work. But there must be moments like this where you just look over your shoulder and it's all worth it. You can always find a spot to, to have a bit of time to yourself, even if we're very busy in the summer season. There's always an area you can, you can be on your own in the water or near the water and it has a real calming influence. It's a beautiful spot to be in. The practical side of life is more difficult. You can't do a supermarket home delivery, for example. There's a lot more fetching and carrying, you have to be fairly practical. You tend to plan ahead a wee bit more, so life is maybe not as spontaneous as it might be on the mainland. But, so rewarding. But it's, it's nice. It's, for all that we're remote, we're still very accessible to, to uh, towns and, and cities locally. Yeah. I didn't quite appreciate how close we are to Glasgow, yeah. because it yeah. seems like a world away. Well, we could be in the city centre in, in under an hour from here. Can you really? Yes. What advice would you give to people that see this and think, actually, I want a slice of that rural dream? I think um, I would say, first of all, check the possibility of that from a technology point of view, um, because that's the most essential thing to anyone nowadays, really, for work. And also consider that you, you won't have everything you perhaps had on your doorstep before, the eight to late shop. Life will be different. Um, but it can be different in a much better way. A lot of people in the west of Scotland are very friendly, they're very accommodating, but they're not in your face, as it were. They'd be more than happy to help you, but they're not necessarily going to badger you to join groups, etc. Um, it's, a, it's a very laid-back community around here and that people will, will help you out in any way, um, but they give you space, which is really nice. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking for nowadays. Morag, thank you so much for sharing your little bit of paradise. You're very welcome. Lovely to meet you. Well, I think it's fair to say that Matt and Lizzie have fallen in love with Argyll and Butte and also one of our houses. But how much? Let's go and find out. Oh, can't beat a cup of tea, can you? And a serious chat. <laughs> I don't want to sound quietly confident, but have we found you your new home? <laughs> well, we do think that there is one that we're very, very keen on. Would it be the first one by any chance, would it? I think it could be, <laughs> yeah. yes. It was amazing. It met our needs so perfectly. Mm. We can't believe 
that we were so lucky to see it in our first house we've walked into in our property search. It's like drawing a winning lucky dip in the lottery. Oh, I'm so excited, I'm going to have a sip of tea. <laughs> I was going to say, is it the one by the lock? But that'd be a silly thing to say in our Gala Butte, really, <laughs> wouldn't it? Because I think everything we've seen is by a beautiful lock. Almost before we went inside the house, we felt we loved it. Mm. But the space inside was perfect for us, you know. It, the kitchen were, and the little snug next to it, we could imagine ourselves in. That lovely dining conservatory. And we loved the garden. It was so beautifully done. And that wonderful view. Incredible view. So we're going back there tomorrow for a second viewing. Are you? And to look yes. around the <laughs> neighbourhood. And um, we're talking to our solicitor. Uh, he's ex expressed interest to their estate agent, which is the first formal step towards making an offer. This is and... all very good news. <laughs> you have been busy since I left you. I'm delighted, absolutely thrilled. We really, truly are. I hope the second viewing goes extremely well. And um, well, it'd be lovely to be able to come back here and visit you and find out how life is all going. Fantastic, you'll be very welcome. Yes. Thank you. I've really, really enjoyed the last few days. I truly yeah. have. Yeah, Likewise. thank you. Yeah, we have as well. The adventure begins. <laughs> <laughs> the adventure begins. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Shouldn't there be a dram in here? <laughs> So an impressive time here in our Garland Butte with Matt and Lizzie. They are completely smitten with this area and convinced this is the right place to start their new way of life. And what's more, they totally fell in love with the very first property we showed them. So much so they put in that all important second viewing already in their diary. We can't wait to find out what happens next. And that's it from me from Scotland. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you again very soon. Lizzie and Matt made an offer on the first house and it was accepted. Sadly, however, the vendor had to withdraw from the sale a short time after. With their hearts now firmly in our garden butte, they headed straight back to continue their search and we hope it won't be too long until their new life here begins. If you would like to escape to the country in Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales or England and need our help, you can apply online at bbc.co.uk forward slash take part.